Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to the video. So actually today we're gonna to be doing a um, update overview. This update literally was released like 50 minutes ago. So this is fresh content at the time of filming. I'm gonna you know, upload it within a couple hours. So it is fresh content. Uh, so hopefully uh, you guys can get you know ahead of the curve on knowing what's up and uh, can jump straight into rank games tomorrow morning and, and clap some serious cheeks basically. Um, so we're gonna go through the you know the patch. I didn't do a video on the last one, so if you guys are a little bit lost, I mean you guys probably already seen it from other videos or have taken a look at it yourself. But um, <clears throat> this is gonna be the May twenty seventh, twenty twenty update. Uh, this is the code, and let's just hop right into it. So uh, I'm gonna skip most of the filler here. Uh, just get right to the meat of uh, you know what's actually going on, the balance changes, the map changes, all that good stuff. So uh, let's just see what they fix here real quick. So they fixed they fixed the infamous five minute disconnect. So I've never had this issue, but if someone was having it, it's fixed now, so that's cool. Uh, Malay now prioritizes speed over stamina on aging up, so this just means that they don't have the bug anymore. Um, way to word it that there's no bug in, in, inside the phrase, but yeah, this just means that Malay now works, uh, which is obviously a really good sign. Uh, imp implemented various balance changes and fixes for stabilization units and maps, that's good. And uh, yeah, all that good stuff, so again, just more filler, some AI stuff as well. All right, cool. Let's just hop right into it here. Um, everything's looking pretty solid. Uh, yeah, that's the disconnect fix. There it is. If you guys are um, you know, looking for that, if you can ask questions, not too interested in that. Uh, all right, game stability. Game will no longer crash when using Marco Polo, Marco Polo, Marco Polo, or IR winner. Good old cheat codes. Anyone else still play with cheat codes? Let me know in the comments, actually, if you guys do. Uh, I used to I used to be a big fan of cheat codes. Actually, I think the cheat code that's really underrated is Aegis or Ages. I think that like that could potentially make for a really fun game if like you like every five minutes you turn it on for like thirty seconds. I think it can be pretty cool. Anyway, <laughs> um, all right, gameplay. Uh, fix an issue where players can research technologies instantaneously at no cost and or more than once. So this is a bug that's been going on quite a little bit. If you've been watching my stream, you know that I was a victim to the people who abused this bug. Thank God it's fixed. Um, and so there shouldn't be any you know, quote unquote cheaters or bug abusers running around the rank, rank ladder nowadays, which is obviously a really good sign because they were making the experience pretty, uh, pretty bad, pretty tilting. In fact, uh, Malay now probably work, which is awesome. Okay. So they did address the issue. I thought they were just going to stick with the earlier wording where it's like kind of like dodging it or something like that, but okay. They did address the issue. Cool. Yeah. It's Malay is fixed. Now they do have their bonus back. Double the maximum scroll speed threshold for players who want to see more of the map in less time. So if you're a like five head, 300 IQ genius who's like running around the map in like supersonic speed, you're gonna just be insane on this patch. So they doubled it in fact, so that's pretty good. I doubt you can just keep scrolling, this doesn't concern you. Uh, siege workshops constructed next to walls can no longer be used to spawn units on the opposite side of said walls in certain circumstances. I actually, uh, one of my VIPs on stream, Scrublord, uh, <laughs> told me about this once. And uh, I was pretty shocked to hear about that. But yeah, that's a glitch that you can basically, if you make your siege workshop next to a stone wall or a palisade wall, you can actually like eject your building or eject your units on the other side of the wall. And on arena, obviously that was problematic more, you know, <laughs> in certain cases, but uh, it's fixed now, which is cool. Premier villagers will now continue constructing houses after garrisoning and being sent back to the work. That's cool. Uh, visual issue. Oh, this is really good. Fixed a visual issue where the rubble of destroyed buildings can be seen through fog of war. That is really good. That was an issue that was there since the start of DE. That's a big fix. Props to the team, actually. Props to the team. Props to the team. That's a really good one. <laughs> That's actually a really good change. I'm a huge fan of that. It, it basically, then like, when you could see destroyed buildings through fog of war, if you're like sneaking a villain, you have like a house and you like delete it for some reason, uh, or like you start building a house and you're like, okay, let's build it somewhere else. The guy can still see that you were there at one point and, um, it's just really easy to you know to to spot you, and it's a lot harder to sneak. So that's actually a really good change. Uh, fix an issue where the, attacking the sides, aka the gatehouse towers or barbicans of gates, would not trigger the attack notification sound. That's good. Rare issue where, which allowed units to be queued and trained at the wrong building. I never had that one. Dolphins will no longer remain on the map once they've been depleted. Dolphin. What? <laughs> you know dolphins in AOE? Wait, is that like some fish? Does anyone know what a dolphin is? Okay, I'm very confused. If someone knows what a dolphin is, please let me know. Again, you guys have to talk talk, talk to me a lot in the comments on this one because I'm very confused about what the what the dolphins were about there. The homeless achievements? Okay, that's an achievement, whatever. If you guys are looking for those, just look into that. Not for me. Civilization balance, this is what we're looking for. Okay, so the general ones. Supplies technology is no longer available. The Chinese, Q 
humans, Hans, Khmer, Lithuanians, Mayans, Mongols, and Tatars. This is very interesting. I have to see how much this actually affects these civs. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm noticing that this will actually affect Chinese the most. And the reason, it, the reason is Chinese, I think, is the only one with fully upgraded champions out of these civs. Uh, I don't think humans get the last armor on the infantry. Mongols get fully upgraded champions as well. No, they're missing Blast Furnace. Uh, no, no, they get Blast Furnace. No, they have fully upgraded champions. Yeah, so Chinese and Mongols, this hurts the most, I think. Oof, that's actually quite bad. Mongols... Man, Mongols have no answer to Goths now. They're indirectly buffing Goths so much. You have to be really careful with this. I'm actually not a huge fan of this change. Supplies is one of the changes that was kind of keeping Goths and spam and mass eagles in balance. To take it away from certain civs just makes it really hard to counter some of those options, especially for mid-tier players, mid-level players. Yeah, this, this change is a bit, a bit dubious. Um, I mean, I can see why you remove it for some of these civs that aren't infantry specialists, but... I mean, I, I could see it for Chinese as well. They don't really need the option. But for something like Mongols, where you kind of need the champion option, um, I mean, you're very powerful without it. Don't get me wrong. Mongol late game, I talk about it all the time. It's really strong. But it's kind of one-dimensional now. Like, without supplies, you can't really justify going champions oftentimes, in my opinion, at least in this meta. I mean, you could obviously still go for them. You still have fully upgraded champions. But it's not as efficient a tech switch in, like, 1v1 as it was before. Uh, okay, like it's not going to destroy any of these civs, but it's going to make them maybe a little bit more linear. It's an interesting change. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, Watchtowers can no longer be built in the Dark Age. Yeah, this is good. So basically what this is saying is that if you start with a, a tower, like in Registered Fortress, you can actually build Watchtowers in Dark Age. They remove that. I think that's a fine change. It's not going to affect the game mostly, most likely though. Star, reduce the length of attack animation from 1.89 to 1.35 seconds, equivalent to Light Cavalry. This does not increase their DPS, but improves their ability to chase and harass their targets. Uh, a good change, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what to say about this one too much. I guess it's just going to make them a bit more effective at raiding. Um, which is kind of weird, because Hussars are usually already beastly at raiding. Um, but I guess if it's going to be the same as the Light Cap, that's fine. Okay, so now it's the civilization. So... Aztec, uh, the civilization bonus, will, which decreases the training time of military units, now does so by 10% instead of 15%. That's a really good change in my opinion. So this, what this is going to affect more often, or more so than the rest, is the eagle production. Aztecs were notoriously strong for their 1TC eagle monk siege push. Uh, very deadly on a, on a variety of maps. And this is going to nerf that more so than anything else, I think, because eagles are generally really slow to make. And it's a unit that does really well when massed, so... Hurting how fast you can mass that one is actually quite nice. And I still think the bonus is really good at 10%. Like, this is a fine change. Uh, it's The sieve doesn't suck now. It's just a small nerf that, yeah, you know, 15, I agree, was a bit too much. So this is actually cool. I like this change. Once again, props to the balance team. That's solid. Uh, Burmese, the bonuses granted by the Manipur Cavalry upgrade are no longer partially blocked by the Masonry tech. Ah, interesting. Okay, so Masonry, if you guys don't know what it does, it's a tech uh, technology at the university which gives your buildings more armor and a bit more HP as well. And Manipur Cavalry is the unique tech in Imperial Age that gives um, your Arambai extra damage to this building. So basically, this just buffs this upgrade because they can't easily defend against it with Masonry. They need to go up to Architecture to get armor for their buildings against that. So that, that's cool. I think that's fine. Uh, Indians. Team bonus uh, to damage dealt by camels to structures is no longer blocked by the masonry. Okay. And applies to all buildings. So they buffed the, the team bonus, I guess. But it was as intended to be, which is cool. Um, not going to have a huge deal. Not going to have a, like a game-changing thing, though. Like It's not it's not game-changing, basically, this um, change. Um, it might be more, more effect in, in team games, I guess. Okay. Uh, Elephant Archer. Okay, it's reload time, so it fires faster, uh, so more DPS, and reduces the cost from 80 gold to 70 gold. Uh, to be honest, it's still trash. Like It's going to help out a little bit. It might be a little bit more viable, but it, it still doesn't really make sense as an archer unit. Uh, it's a slow-moving, high-HP archer unit that doesn't do a lot of damage, so it's not. it doesn't really fit the, the general criteria of a backline unit, in my opinion. Mayans, Eldorado increased the tech... Research to upgrade from 50 to 70 seconds. Oh boy, Luca just dropped 200 ELO. <laughs> Luca, if you're out there, man, uh, good luck climbing after this one. Uh, it's actually not that big a nerf, though. I think this is actually a, a fair and needed change. Eldorado gave, gives, it doesn't gave, it gives too much of an Imperial Age spike because 40 HP on Eagles is huge. Uh, and buying your opponent 20 seconds before this kicks in is solid. Like, that, that helps. 50 seconds was too slow. I agree on that. Um... 
I wouldn't even mind if this was nerfed a little bit more as well. Like, mine eagles are pretty obnoxious. I think maybe even... I wouldn't say increase the cost, but... Yeah, maybe this will make it fine. Yeah, maybe this will make it fine. We'll see how that plays out. Alright, for Saracens, uh, Zilla Tree, if you guys don't know what this does, it gives their Mamelukes and Camels plus 30 HP. They would just reduce the cost from the upgrade from 800 gold to 700 gold. That's fine. 100 gold discounts. It's not going to make it OP, it's just going to make it a bit more affordable, which is always cool. Alright, some stuff for campaigns that I don't really know. Uh, and random map stuff. Okay. They don't start straggle right next to forest. Oh, that's really good, actually. Yeah, that's nice. The way starting golden stone nodes are generated has been revised to prevent situations where they fail to spawn entirely. That's cool. Predator animals are generated on several maps. Okay, cool. How they're generated. All right, some map changes. I'm not going to go through all of them. There's not any, like, huge ones, I think, to really talk about. Um, you can go through them on your own, guys. I'll you can pause the video if you want to read as well. Um, random map scripting, don't really understand that. Lobbies and matchmaking, let's take a look here. Remove the grace period where players can resign from a ranked match without losing elo points, that's good. Fix an issue where pre which prevented players from joining another multiplayer lobby after playing a custom scenario in the same session. Don't know about that one. Uh, seems good though. Fix an issue where which prevented player chat from appearing when, player, when playing a custom multiplayer scenario. Again, didn't really know about that. Seems good though. Okay, so now we're gonna have the new map pool. Let's listen to this video. It's probably the best way to do it. So let's just, I'm gonna, you know, Not the stop talking. This month, Kilimanjaro, oh. Golden Pit, okay, I'll take Fog Islands, off. Wolf Hill, and Mountain Pass have been that added voice, to the map though, pool. Craigism. Let's take a quick look at the new maps and what you can expect to find. Kilimanjaro has a steep incline towards the center of the map where the majority of the trees are located. Oh, right. Each My player spawns with on. eight herdable animals, an elephant, and a berry patch quite close to the town center. Okay, You'll sorry also about that. find four huntable animals nearby should you want to make use of them. So this is you will have access to a four and three tile gold mine and the equivalent stone mines nearby the town center. As the name implies, Golden Pit has a large pit in the center of the map containing the majority of the gold on the map. Each player spawns with eight sheep or their equivalent or a mix of cows and other herdables. Two boar and a berry patch are also quite close to the town center, with four huntables a tad further away. Players only have access to two small gold piles before they'll have to fight for gold control in the center of the map. Stone is also of short supply, with only two four tile stone mines available per player. The majority of the map on Bog Islands is made up of mangrove shallows, which can be built upon and traversed by land units and ships. The center of the map contains a limited amount of fish an extra water buffalo can be found throughout the map. Each player spawns with four water buffalo and three rhino on their starting islands. You may also have access to a small amount of box turtles. On your starting island, you'll have access to two four tile golds and a three and four tile stone. The center of Wolf Hill contains a large collection of relics guarded by wolves or other predators. Oh, wolves? Each player hold on, hold on. Contains a wolves? There's like two wolves! I see three wolves. This should be called Relic Hill, not Wolf Hill. Okay, I'm sorry. This is one Wolf Hill. Large collection of relics guarded by <laughs> sorry wolves about that. or other predators. Had to. Each player starts the match with six herdable animals close by, and Wait, another my thing nine. Is buggy again, one sec. And further away from the oh, it's still buggy. town center. What's going on. That should be good. Two boar. I'm not sure what's happening here. Also available alongside five huntables. Yeah. You'll have access to a three and four tile gold close by the town center and a four tile stone. Mountain Pass has a similar start to Nomad. However, it has no water. The map features plenty of huntables and herdables for food income, all to consider when placing your town center. Having safe access to one of the small pockets of trees scattered across the map is also something to think about. Small four-tile golds can be found around the entire map. The same goes for three-tile stones. We hope you have a fantastic time exploring the new maps over the next month. It's time to get creative with new strategies and builds. Okay. So that's that. I'm not sure why my thing is so buggy, man. Is it like this the whole time? Okay, uh, let me put back the webcam. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's so buggy on the video. I'll probably just edit out the parts that were kind of chunky or kind of, yeah, whatever. Actually, I, just, I don't edit videos, so you guys are going to experience the full thing. 
Uh, so yeah, that was the map pool. Uh, I don't even really know where I am right now. Okay, sorry, I have to scroll down here. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so that was the map pool. Uh, let's get past those YouTube recommendations real quick. Um, yeah, so... I'm not really sure what to think about this one. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I, <laughs> I, I think this this map pool is not, not that good. Like, again, we only have one open land map in Arabia. Every other map will get boring after playing it three times, for me personally, as a top level player. I don't know, maybe you guys will like them. Uh, a lot of them just seems like the center of control matters too much, like in Wolf Hill, sorry, Relic Hill, and Golden Pit. Um, Continent is okay, I guess. Bog Islands is terrible, in my opinion. Uh, so, I don't know. This this map pool seems a bit all over the place. I have to try out Kilimanjaro a bit more and Mountain Pass. I don't really know what they are. Hill Fort, I'm not a fan of. So, well, you know, we'll see how it goes, but I'm not a huge fan of this. I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Uh, team map. Oh, sorry. Wolf Hill was for a um, uh, team game. Sorry. Uh, Arabia Arena, Black Forest, Lombardia. Lombardia is cool. I like that map. That's for team games. I don't know. Map seems okay. Like on, on the average side of things, I'd, I'd say personally. Uh, okay. Oh, fast imperial strategy for the AI. Bro, the AI is going to be using my build orders. Oh, exclamation mark Discord. Extreme AI. Listen up. Step to my stream. Check out my Discord. I have a sick builder for Fast Imperial Age. You, you, you're going to need it, okay? You're going to be bodying 1400s left and right. Not 1400s. You're going to be bodying new players left and right. Okay. So I'm just talking to the Extreme AI real quick. It's going to need it. Um, all right. That seems pretty good scripting. So again, pause the video if you want to read this. I'm not going to really go through it because I don't really understand too much about it. UI. Okay. Okay. Chinese, French, German, Hindi. All that good stuff. Okay. I think that's going to be rounding up the patch. Uh, graphics. All right, editor. Uh, all right, pathfinding, ongoing investigation. Yeah, I'm gonna need to send Sherlock on that one because uh, it's been ongoing for a while now. <laughs> all right, uh, guys, this is gonna be the end of the video, basically, right? I think I covered everything. Um, threw in a few sarcastic comments, threw in some productive comments from you know once in a while. So hopefully this was you know both easy to watch, fun to watch, and also productive for you guys. And hopefully it's a little bit insightful. Guys, get out there on the rank ladder. Find that ELO, uh, and I'll see you guys in the top 10, um, and then I'll play against you. That's the plan, right? That should be what you guys are you know, going for. So take care. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow for my So You Want to Play Bulgarians episode, and uh, we should be good to go. I might post a video before that as well. We'll see. Take care, guys. Have a good one.